there and welcome to Insomnia Insight number 372, in which we'll talk about something that I think is really, really important, especially if you felt this like your heart's racing and being fast and you're sweating, you're, you know, you're breathing fast, you feel like almost this auto, you know, depersonalization, you're nauseous, you're, you know, you feel, you feel like something must be wrong. If you felt that way, this video is for you. We're gonna talk about why that happens and how you can get to a place where that isn't scary anymore. And eventually also how you, you have less of that, of course. But what we're really gonna focus on is, you know, why this seems so scary and odd and you think something is really wrong and something's about to happen to me. This cannot be good for me, etc. But before we go there, I just wanna actually uh, credit Nick Wignall with, you know, the analogy or, or kind of the thinking that uh, we're gonna talk about today. He, uh, I've, I mentioned him in both my books and he, he's somebody who's, who I've, I've learned a lot from. You can Google him, you can get to his website and I, he has a newsletter, I think it was very popular, but he, he's a great guy. So I just wanna thank him first. Now, I already, you know, a little bit of backstory here. In fact, the reason I wanna talk about this today was that one of my clients uh, mentioned that she had these type of symptoms and, and that she was very afraid that this was somehow this combination of like the insomnia, anxiety, the palpitation was somehow going to hurt her like that. It, it, it cannot be good for my body to have this happening, she said. And I want to say to I said to her and to everyone else that's tuning in here, uh, if you're concerned about your health, of course, talk to your doctor. But in, in you know, we're going to talk about the, all this in the context of anxiety. So when you have like hearts being fast, you feel anxious energy, you're being fast. You, it often seems like this cannot be good. You know, this must take a toll on my body. And this is like not normal, right? That's, that's you know, that's the premise. And that's in itself, you know, very unpleasant. Uh, and now the question here becomes, we, we recognize this, of course, as this is a type of fight and flight response, right? It is, we, we you know, we know that, you know, sometimes there's a little doubt, like, is this really anxiety? But in, if we're honest with ourselves, we recognize that this is a type of fight and flight response. So, why is it the question is why does it feel so scary if we know if we understand if, we, if we're familiar with this reaction well here's the thing so here's what nick nick talked about and here's we're going to get into this little analogy imagine that you're playing this in intense game of basketball right you know you're playing playing and this other player is june that you know is a really good player he's coming he's going to steal the ball what do you feel at that moment you know what, you know what do you feel or like the shot clock is running down you have like two seconds one second you're going to go for it what do you feel in this moment? Well, the thing is, it's very hard. You, you can't like freeze time and ask like, what are you, what are you feeling? What are you thinking right now? But if you just imagine the this type of situation, then you can see that you know the same thing is actually happening. The exact same thing is actually happening. You have this fight or flight response. You know, part of the the, the reason we like sports is kind of like life and death. You know, it's like this intense. I got to win, lose, life, death, that thing going on, right? And so when this is happening, you know, your heart is beating fast, you're sweating, you're breathing fast, you are, you, you know, your emotions go from like, you know, ex excitement, like, like this, like fantastic moments and like, and like real, like fear, like fear, you know, when June's coming from the less fear, right? So we have the exact, the exact same things are happening in your body when you have a fight or flight response from whatever reason and from like playing basketball. But here's the thing, why is it that, you know, nobody is like, you know, stopping a game of basketball and be like, whoa, what's going on? My heart is racing. I'm feeling sweaty. Something's wrong with me. Why isn't that? Well, it's because the fight or flight reaction isn't scary because it is in context. It is in context. It's obvious to you why these things are happening in your body. And that's why it is not scary. That's why you're not thinking something must be wrong, right? Now, here's the thing, you know, the threat is obvious. Again, we talked about this is why you should feel that way. But the thing is that with a perceived threat, like being awake at night or like with anxiety, this is kind of like this, you have this kind of like ill-defined thing that you're just like anxious about, let's say. When, when that happens, when, when there's, there's, no, there's no obvious physical threat that you can identify, there's this perceived threat, the same reaction is out of context. It's like, why is all these things happening to me? I shouldn't feel this way. There's no obvious threat. But in reality, it is quite simple. It's that to the, to the brain, a threat is a threat. A, a, a bull charging at you or like thinking about, am I going to be awake tonight? Both of them, like there's 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 this threat picture and a threat is is always uh, is, is met in the same way regardless of, 
whether it is perceived or tangible and physical. So this is this is what happens. And again, the most important thing with this video is that the reason it feels so scary uh, when there's no obvious threat is that um, it's out of context. It is out of context. So when this happens to you, when you have this fight or flight, fight or fight or flight reaction that it feels out of context, what should you be doing? Well, really, it, it comes down to this deploy awareness, deploy awareness. Just know that, okay, I have this fight or flight reaction, and the reason it's kind of scary to me is that it's out of context. And when you understand that, that's just like demystifies it, and the whole reaction becomes like less, it kind of, it, 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 it um, alleviates so much of the scariness of it. So it's really helpful in that moment, but also over time, you know, uh, when, when you demystify anything, everything, you know, everything becomes easier. So I think deploying awareness is like number one. And I think, uh, you know, when it comes to like not having that fight or flight reaction in itself, like not having, for example, sleep anxiety or anxiety, that's a bigger topic. You know, that's what all the videos here really are about that. But what I really want to talk about here was that if you deploy awareness in the situation and you know the, the in context, out of context thing here, then you will still have fight or flight directions. Like all we all we all do that. We all humans do. But the thing is, it will not seem it will not be scary or odd. You will not think, oh my gosh, something really terrible is going to happen to me. You'll you you'll, you'll understand that it's just an out of context fight or flight reaction. That that is all there is to it. So I, I hope this was helpful to you. Please let me know in the comment section um, uh, if if this is something that resonated with you or if you have questions about this. And uh, before I let you go, I just want to say that if you like the teaching that you're hearing on this channel, if you think it's helpful, but you're thinking, I would like some more hand-holding support guidance towards uh, my I mean, that place where I want to be, where I sleep really well, then consider downloading Bedtime on the App Store. That's where I coach one-on-one. -on -one. It's got a really nice curriculum too. I think you'll find it really helpful if you check it out. You can also, if you like a sort of group setting, sort of a support group setting, then check out the self-coaching master program that is on our website. And if you're interested in perhaps something new in your life, maybe a, a change of career trajectory or whatnot, consider applying to become a sleep coach. Maybe you've had insomnia for a long time. Maybe you're doing better. Maybe you want, you want to help others. Then do send an application that you'll find also on our website. So with that said, I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to having you on here real soon. Until then, stay out of trouble.